Welcome back. This video continues where the last video ended, so for context, make sure to watch the preceding videos. That's, we could just leave it at that, or we could go by the ratios that I showed before, but I won't, so I'm just gonna show you that we can change the actual depth. So we can actually decide not to go completely full, but we can do like a partial rib like that. However, I'm not a fan of doing it this way and I prefer just to do two next and then click OK. Now, if we don't, if we want to hide this uh, construction plane, we could either do it by clicking here or we can click V by selecting it and hitting V. So when it's blue and then you click off, it will disappear just like that. Now, you're usually going to want to have more than one rib. So what we can do is go to... Um, well, we need to create a mid plane, something that we can mirror about. So we need to go to construct mid plane and we're going to select two planes, which we can then get the middle point of. So we're going to select these two planes here. So this creates this kind of like a nice plane directly in the middle of those two edges. So we can click OK. And now we can use the mirror tool. And if you don't have it up here, it's probably somewhere else, such as, uh, hmm. yeah, create mirror. And if you don't realize, you can actually go here and go to pin to toolbar. So we're gonna click on mirror and we're gonna choose features because this is a feature in itself. We can also click on it here. That's the feature. So I like to select it here rather than here because sometimes you can make a mistake, for example, by not selecting the right feature if you do it here. So uh, now we just need to select the mirror plane. So we're gonna click on this and then we're gonna use this plane here as the mirror. And then you can see it's created like a, a ghost representation of where it will be. Now that's perfect, that's exactly what we want. So we can click okay. Now we don't care about this work plane, so we're going to select it and then hit V. It goes a deeper blue and if we click off, it's gone. So now we've created two beautiful ribs. But I did want to show you how to create a, a, uh, a rib that isn't quite, you know, straight. So what we can do is, because we created our construction plane in the middle before, and if we just rename this to, I don't know, mid, plane we can use this again and hit l to start a line and then i don't actually want to create a line i want to create a fit point spline and if you don't have your fit point spline here what you can do is go to create um ooh, spline fit point spline create pin it to toolbar so fit point spline now i'm just going to create one from the Whoops, again, we have possibly the same issue here. So we need to project by pressing P or we can go through that menu like before. And we're gonna project, this time I'm gonna just project this and this. That's all the lines we'll ever need. And I'm gonna go to front. And because this is in the way now, what we can do is go to slice. And slice essentially just gives you the cross section of where the plane you're working on is. So everything that was in our view blocking it, if we turn slice back off, it's kind of like hidden so that you can create your thing without things in the way. So we're going to go to front and we're going to fit point spline. And we're just going to draw some kind of fun kind of shape like that. Now we're going to right click and go to OK. Now we can go to, actually first I'm going to make sure that these tangent handles are joined like so. So we can click on this horizontal vertical constraint to do so. And if you didn't know, the tangent handle is this green line and it just defines the curvature of the spline. So if it's in between and if it's like an exact 45 degree, the computer won't know or fusion won't know exactly how you want it to go. So you need to sometimes 
budget a bit more vertical, then use it to define that you want it completely straight or vertical. So that looks fine. Now we're going to finish sketch. And we're going to go back to create rib and click on this line here or spline really. So I'm just going to leave it at free. Maybe we could mess around with it a bit. Um, I don't know. That's a bit thick, but yeah, I'll just leave it. It's fine. So we've got a five mil kind of curvy rib. So maybe if you're making something that's a bit more retro looking, you could use something like that. Of course, that's probably not as effective uh, structurally. I mean, I'm sure a mechanical engineer would um, disagree with using such a curvy kind of profile, but it kind of gives you an example of what you can do with the rib tool. So we've already explained that. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. Um, so if you want to create something like this, we can't use the rib tool because it won't work in that axis. So we need to use a tool called web. So if I go to a, create a new document, sorry, a new, uh, I guess it is a new document. <laughs> so if we create a uh, new sketch, so we, I'm just going to press R for, I don't know what R even stands for actually, R for, I don't know, create. Uh, okay, let's just uh, go back and press L, L for line, and then just select, a, I'm gonna select the bottom plane. R would have been rectangle, I'm stupid. So we're gonna go back to R and we're gonna create like a box sort of shape. Uh, I don't like things completely square, so I'm gonna do that. And for some reason, my sketch dimensions don't like to auto apply themselves after I click. So I have to enter them back in again, unless that's something that uh, Autodesk changed and I didn't know about, but who knows? So yeah, I've just added the sketch dimensions by pressing D. Now we're just gonna click on here. We're gonna press E for extrude and extrude it by say 50. And now we're going to create a box shape uh, quickly by going to shell. And we want the wall thickness to be, I don't know, two mil. So this creates a really quick box without having to model the walls and then extrude them upwards. And even the bottom floor, if we measure it um, by pressing I for measure tool, selecting the bottom face and then the top face, we got a distance of two mil and click close. So to create that sort of web shape, what we need to do is not work in this axis like that. We need to work top down. So what we can do is start, and I've just clicked L to start a line, um, my cheat way of getting to the sketch thing, as I said. We're gonna start on this profile here. So now we can go mad um, creating lines. So I've just enabled the line tool. And we can do something like that. Um, and then I'm gonna use D, and I'm gonna put a dimension like that. I'm gonna set 10. And just to show you that I can do anything, I'm going to go at some stupid angle like that. And we can even specify the angle of that, I suppose. Um, make that 45. Oh, uh, maybe not. I don't know. Let's drag that there. And let's go to D for dimension, and we're going to change that to I don't know, five. So now we've got a lovely black lines, which just means it's fully defined. It means that we can't drag it about, which is what we want. So let's just add one more for fun. Um, here to here. And put a dimension by hitting D, and we're going to type in, I don't know, three. And let's finish sketch. Now we're going to go to create and web. Select this line. Hold control, select this line. Hold control, select this line. So now we've created a web kind of rib sort of feature. You can change the thickness by going to two or three or whatever you like. Let's see how far we can go. Actually, it's 10. Okay, that's really ridiculous, but 
This video got a little long so it was broken up into separate videos. To continue watching click on the next video in the playlist.